In this video, we're going to take a look at one of the file upload vulnerabilities labs in the Port Swigger Web Security Academy. It's called Web Shell Upload via Path Traversal. Because this is the fourth video we've done on file upload vulnerabilities, and the last video on content type filter bypass had quite a detailed recap, I'm going to avoid that this time. So let me just say that file upload vulnerabilities arise when web applications don't properly validate uploaded files. And this can allow attackers to upload malicious files and execute code on the web server. So the previous video focused on the content type filtering technique, which is a way of preventing dangerous file types from being uploaded in the first place. The second line of defense is to stop the server from executing any scripts that do slip through the net. So as a precaution, servers will generally only run scripts whose MIME type has been explicitly configured to execute. So we have an example here of a PHP file and they're trying to execute the command ID, but the server is just responding with a content type text slash plain and the actual source code of the file. So this behavior is interesting in its own right as it may provide a way for us to leak the source code of files, but it prevents us from uploading a shell which we could use to gain command execution. However, this configuration often differs between directories. So the directory where our file has been uploaded to might be configured to not execute PHP files. But if we're able to upload our file to a different directory that doesn't have that restriction, then we might still be able to access it and gain command execution. So that brings us to this lab, which contains a vulnerable image uploader function and the service configured to prevent execution of user supplied files. But this restriction can be bypassed by exploiting a secondary vulnerability. To solve the lab, we need to upload a basic PHP web shell and use it to exfiltrate the contents of this secret file in Carlos's home directory. And then we need to submit that secret with the banner. So we've been given some credentials. Let's go and access the lab and we'll go and log in to begin with. So we'll go to my account, log in, and we get through to our my account page, which we can use to update the email and to upload an avatar. So I'm going to go and select the basic PHP web shell which is just like we saw in that example, but you'll see it in a second as well. Click upload and you can see that's been uploaded. So if we go back to the account and then right click on the image, open a new tab, and hopefully we'll see that this will execute our command, but it doesn't. And if we go and have a look at Burp Suite and take a look at that request, we'll see that actually it just returned with the contents of the file, which is exactly what we just saw in that example. So it's been configured not to execute PHP, and instead it returns with this file. So we know that it's tried to upload this to the avatars directory. What if we go back one directory into the files directory? Because maybe that doesn't have the same restriction saying that we can't execute PHP code. So we can just go to Burp Suite and we'll find our post request where we updated the avatar, which was right here, post my account avatar, send that to the repeater. And then we'll go and have a look at our request. We can see that we've got our code in here, the PHP web shell and we've got the name of the form field, we've got the file name, and then we've got our username and a CSRF token. So let's try and update the name, the file name of this to dot dot slash. So it tries to go into the files directory instead of avatars. We click send and we see this, the file avatars shell.php has been uploaded. So it doesn't actually show the dot dot slash that we entered there, but let's go and try it nonetheless. We'll refresh the page, right click and open in new tab but we get file not found. So perhaps there's some filtering in place which is preventing us from entering in those dot dot slashes in the file name. What we could do is go to something like hat tricks or payloads all the things and look up some filter bypasses. So there are various types of encoding and things we can use to try and bypass filters. I'm just opening up the port swigger directory traversal section, which has some of these as well. So for example, you can see here that we can use URL encoded or double URL encoded is one of the methods. There are various others, but let's try that for now. Let's go back to we'll go back to the repeater and I'm going to change this to the dot dot slash, but it's using URL encoding. We click send and notice that this time it has the dot dot slash in the response, which is a good sign. Let's refresh the page and open image in a new tab. And it comes up here saying not found, but notice that it has the dot dot slashes here. We don't want that. We actually want to go back to that files directory. And that looks good. It doesn't say it's not found. Let's do LS. And there you can see that we have the output. So that's looking very good. Who am I? We are Carlos. Great. Okay. Let me move to the burp repeater to make this a little bit easier to see. I'm going to send our command to the repeater and then we can do cat 
plus to URL encode the space and then home Carlos secret. We click send and we get back the secret. So we can go and submit it and that is the lab solved. One thing to mention is that although we were able to write the files directory in this case, it's not necessarily guaranteed that we'll be able to write there or that we'll be able to read from it or that we'll be able to execute PHP files in it. What I would normally do is actually go and have a look and see where images are being placed on the site. So if we go back to the blog and then we just right click on one of the images, open image in new tab. This is in image blog posts and then we've got that image. So maybe you would try and do dot dot slash dot dot slash dot dot slash go to image blog posts and then put the file there. Quite often as well, the static folder is a good option for that. So if you try and use static images or something to upload your web shell and then try to access that in the browser, I've seen that come up in a few capture the flag competitions. So we've taken a look at how to exploit this vulnerability, but how do we remediate it? How do we prevent this from happening? And we talked about this a little bit in the previous video, but there are a few different ways that we can defend against these attacks. The first is, of course, to try and prevent users from uploading malicious files. So you can filter by the content type, you can filter by the extension, you can filter by the actual MIME type. So you can look at not just the content type, you can actually compare that to the type of the file. So does it have the header bytes to match a JPEG, which is like Yoya in some weird characters? Does it have the signature at the end to match a JPEG file? And what if you run it through something like the EXIF tool? Does it actually show the EXIF data for an image? However, all of those things can also be bypassed. So some other things we could do is randomize the file names or the directories that are being used and not display that to the user. So even if the user uploads a malicious file, they can't locate it in order to execute it. And then finally, as we've seen today, what we could also do is prevent certain directories from being able to execute files. It's just important that you make sure that all directories that the user could potentially write to have that restriction in place and also just make sure users can't write to directories that you don't expect them to. Anyway, that's going to wrap it up for this video. Hope you've enjoyed it. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. Thanks. Bye -bye.